Thank you, Dr. CR, for that very kind introduction. So on behalf of my co-authors, Jovito and Jill, I would like to thank the SERP for inviting us to share the results of our study entitled Analysis of the Cross-Border E-Commerce Environment for Philippine Women-Led MSMEs, the Challenges and Opportunities. It is such an honor to be part of this knowledge sharing forum in support of the National Women's Month with the theme, Breaking the Barriers for a More Inclusive Future for Women. This study builds on several key findings of our prior research entitled E-Commerce Adoption and its in impact on the performance of women-led MSMEs in Metro Manila, an ex-ante study for RCEP. So the study, which surveyed over 400 women-led MSMEs in Metro Manila, revealed the small levels of awareness among women-led MSMEs of government programs aimed to support them, their participation in digital economy, and their expansion through cross-border trade. So the study likewise revealed that this lack of awareness translates into impediments to accessing key government programs and services. So as a follow-through to the study's policy recommendations, this pre presentation seeks to further elucidate from the government and policy makers' perspective the challenges concerning the enabling environment for women-led MSMEs. Um, assess the conduciveness of the existing policy architecture for women-led MSMEs engaged in cross-border e-commerce and provide actionable, rec actionable recommendations to address such challenges. So next slide, please. So hence, our presentation will be divided into four parts. So Jovito will be, will be discussing the background of the study, related literature and methodology. Then I will present the data instrumentation, the, the SWOT analysis, and actionable points and ways forward. With this, I would like to turn over the virtual floor to Jovito. Tong, please. Thank you so much, Jean. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Um, yes, Tong. Okay, thank you very much, Jean. And once again, thank you very much to PADS and Srippi for the invitation. It's We're really thrilled to share the results or findings of our study, which was released just last year, this December, uh, last December in 2022. Okay, just to set the stage for the succeeding sections of our presentation, the focus of our paper is basically about women-led micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises in the Philippines. And the background that we're seeing, or basically the stage that is currently uh, happening, is that we're seeing women-led MSMEs at the crossroads in terms of developments in digitalization and international trade. The movements in the external environment, more specifically relating to free trade agreements as embodied by the RCEP, CPTPP, and even IPEF presents opportunities as well as challenges and risks for women-led MSMEs in the Philippines. These FTAs, coupled with the adoption of e-commerce amid the COVID-19 pandemic, underscore the need to somehow survey the policy environment and determine challenges and opportunities for women-led MSMEs who'd like to participate and involve themselves in cross-border trade. Okay. The success of MSMEs is very important not only for the Philippines but also for the APEC region because of its contribution to employment, to GDP, and a lot of other intangibles. By 2022, an estimated 20% of overall e-commerce will comprise cross-border e-commerce. Hence, the main objective of our paper is to basically contribute into the literature on cross-border e-commerce, specifically looking at the impact of certain uh, changes or developments on MSMEs, specifically women-led. Okay? Hence, no, the question that we'd like to ask is, despite the opportunities afforded by the developments in cross-border trade and e-commerce, double MSMEs or women-led MSMEs face just disproportionate and unnecessary challenges that prevent their increased participation in the digital economy. And we have identified three main questions that we want to address in our paper. First is, does the Philippines have an enabling policy environment for, MS for WMSMEs to engage in cross-border e-commerce? Second, what are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in the current policy environment, both at the national and regional levels, concerning women-led MSMEs in cross-border e-commerce? And of course, uh, to contribute to the policy discussion, we would like to come up or outline policy options and recommendations or considerations encompassing women-led MSMEs 
engage in cross-border e-commerce. Next slide, please. Now, to, I, to address the questions that I have just shared with you, we have identified five research objectives. First, and, uh, and let me go through them uh, briefly. The first is to basically adopt a toolkit or questionnaire on the women businesses, women-owned businesses in the cross-border e-commerce. Okay, this was developed by one of the economies in the APEC region, and we adapted it to the Philippine setting. Second is map relevant stakeholders con involving policy and decision makers concerned with policy making on women-led MSMEs and cross-border e-commerce and the Philippines. And then after we're done mapping, we're now we have uh, surveyed or reviewed, examined the policy environment through the application of the toolkit, as well as through desk reviews and web scraping. Okay. After we have the findings and data, we apply the SWOT analysis to identify strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, which may prove to be very important in the country's path uh, to empowering MSME, specifically those who are women-led uh, amidst COVID, amidst a post-COVID-19 recovery and the different developments. And last is, of course, recommend policy options and considerations for the Philippine government. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, the focus of our paper is basically limited to women-led MSMEs and those that participate in e-commerce. And the definitions are, uh, we, we base our definitions uh, those that, on those that are provided by uh, relevant institutions or organizations. The authors only conducted KAIs with selected key stakeholders such as government agencies, business groups, and women's business organizations due to their participation uh, and, and the activities in terms of the issue that we're looking at. And of course, one of the primary consideration when we did our study was basically this was the height of the transition after the May 2022 elections. So we have to, there are certain gaps that were filled by looking at data through web. No, through the internet. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, to uh, to somehow you know uh, familiarize ourselves with the issue and to to uh, gain more understanding on what has been uh, what what are the different stakeholders doing, we divided the literature review into four parts. The first one is basically introducing the role of internationalization and digitalization for MSMEs to thrive in a very interconnected world. Inter internationalization is basically uh, defined as a process uh, by which enterprises expand beyond domestic markets to international markets and further participate in global value change. Of course, digitalization has been instrumental in helping businesses internationalize. However, if you look at the experiences of uh, MSMEs or micro, small, and medium sized enterprises vis a vis e commerce, they still face specific challenges, uh, including trade finance, digital literacy, and e payments, understanding e commerce and digital trade regulations and logistics, discrimination on online platforms, online safety and security, networks, representation, and visibility. And so we also looked at how do this women-led MSMEs perceive government efforts, no? uh, government programs. How do they view e-commerce? And we did this through our previous study, which was which is the foundation of our current study that we're presenting now. The findings of our previous study is that basically, in terms of financial inclusion and access, most women-led MSMEs express the need for fi financial assistance to sustain their businesses. We also asked them if they thought that the government gave enough information on financial aids, loans, e-banking, and e-payment. But majority of them responded that either they are not familiar with government programs or they don't have they're, they're, uh, they don't have any idea at all. And they also cited that they usually tap their personal savings for financial assistance and ask from their families and friends. And very few took from formal channels such as loans from banks and from uh, and from government assistance. We also found that 
the women-led MSMEs lack awareness on government programs. Majority of them were not familiar and did not think that the government communicates its programs to the business sectors. They also express their desire for the government to provide more capacity building and training, more user-friendly digital platforms where they can obtain information on the programs and access to financial institute, uh, assistance. And so this is important because uh, later in the findings, we'll see if indeed programs are non-existent or is there a lack of communication on the end of the government. Okay? We also reviewed digital trade facilitation in the Asia-Pacific region. And digital trade facilitation is basically defined as the application of modern information and communication technologies to simplify and automate international trade procedures, which is very important to, pr to promote higher efficiency and cost savings, especially for businesses engaged in cross-border trade operations. At the global level, the WTO, uh, I'm sorry, the World Customs Organization has its Chapter 7 that provides that all customs uh, processes shall apply ICTs to support operations. On the other hand, the World Trade Organization has come up with the Trade Facilitation Agreement that also perceives ICTs as means to make cross-border trade regulations more transparent. In the ASEAN region, we have the ASEAN Single Window, while in the Philippines, there's actually a lack of laws, there's lack of laws and regulations on uh, cross-border transactions, mainly because countries are left on their own to legislate. Okay? Nevertheless, a study by Kimba, uh, et al., and, uh, Kimba and others, I'm sorry, 2021, assessed the Philippines' readiness for regional trade integration with the Asia-Pacific using the RDTII. Uh, using the framework, they found that the Philippines have a relatively open digital trade environment and they perform best in three pillars, tariffs and trade defense measures, uh, cross-border data policies, and intermediary liability and content access. Okay? In terms of the frameworks at the regional and national levels, uh, APEC has come up with uh, a cross-border e-commerce facilitation framework, while ASEAN has launched a vision for cross-border e-commerce report. In the Philippines, the DTI released an update to the 2016 to 2020 Philippine e-commerce roadmap, and it is named as Basta E-commerce Madali. Madali stands for Market Access, Digitalization, and Logistics Integration. In achieving the vision of trying to streamline or mainstream, streamline and mainstream e-commerce, uh, the Philippine government has identified three important points of intervention, speed, security, and structure. And so all of this no, uh, are basically important foundations into understanding the challenges okay, faced by opportunity challenges faced by WMSMEs and identifying opportunities. Now, in terms of our methodology, next slide, please. In terms of our methodology, we opted to do qualitative research to collect, describe, and analyze data obtained from both first-hand and secondary data. The first-hand data was collected through key informant interviews with specific with relevant stakeholders that we map. No? And uh, the specific number are 10 government agencies and three e-commerce and export-oriented women's advocacy groups and business association. However, some of them were not able to participate because of the ongoing transitions. Hence, we, as I mentioned, we filled the gap through web scraping or through secondary data. And so to share the uh, the meat of our uh, our paper, I will now turn over the floor to Jean, and we look forward to your questions later. Thank you very much, Jean. You, have, you now have the floor. Thank you so much, Jovito. So for the data instrumentation and collection, we utilize the toolkit developed by the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, or APEC, and the United States Agency for International Development entitled Women-Owned Businesses in Cross-Border E-Commerce, a diagnostic toolkit published in 2020. The toolkit was designed to help the APEC community better understand the impediments of competitiveness and growth for women-led e-commerce businesses when trading within economies and across borders. Next slide, please. So in addition to Huvito's discussion of the research methodology, we conducted virtual semi-structured interviews and the administration of questionnaire to the following respondents flash on the screen. 
and it took place um, between August to October 2022. So the objective of the interviews and the questionnaire were to identify the gaps in the policy support for women-led MSMEs that are already engaging in or are ready for cross-border e-commerce. So the goals are to enable policymakers to consider what actions they can take within each issue area and points to areas of collaboration with private sector players, including entrepreneurs and trade support organizations, on creating a strong ecosystem of support for women-led MSMEs. So apart from the identified res respondents, the authors also collated the data from the leading e-commerce platforms in the Philippines. So the authors adopted the toolkit and tailored the questionnaire based on the Philippine setting and was clustered into eight major categories. First one is on data on women and e-commerce. Second is on the trade finance. The third is on digital literacy, e-payments, e-commerce, and digital trade regulations. The fourth category is the discrimination on online platforms. The fifth is the on online safety and security. The sixth part is the networks, representation, and visibility. The seventh part is the trade facilitation agreement. And the last part is on logistics and customs duties. So the essence of these questions have nonetheless remained the same. The questionnaire allowed the authors to glean information on each of the eight areas of the toolkit, which were subsequently analyzed through a SWOT framework. So the authors also afforded the respondents leeway to provide personal insights and anecdotes, which were also subjected to further validation through data scraping and desk reviews. So the adopted toolkit, as used for this research, recognizes the complex interaction and synergies between public and private sectors, particularly insofar as the implementation of government programs for businesses is concerned. While the original diagnostic toolkit was primarily targeted towards selected government agency and policymakers, so the author acknowledged that some of the questions contained therein are better informed by the insight of these agency partners and collaboration in the private sector. So hence, the authors have adopted the toolkit to also accommodate the inputs of business groups and women trade associations. So this approach provided a more holistic picture of the ecosystem within the MSMEs operates. So next slide, please. So using the diagnostic toolkit and the SWOT analysis, it can, it can be observed that the cross-border e-commerce environment is promising under one, the network's representation and visibility, and the second is on digital literacy, e-payments, e-commerce, and digital trade regulations. However, there are areas for improvement such as in um, digital literacy, e-payments, and e-commerce, and digital trade regulations, discrimination on online platforms, and trade facilitation agreement, and lastly, on logistics and custom duties. So um, I will just briefly um, go through the results of each um, category. So on data on e uh, on data on women and e-commerce, it poses both a strength and weakness. So most government agencies collect and store sex disaggregated data to formulate reports and design their respective interventions. However, they have yet to address and mitigate the challenges of collecting and processing data on women-led MSMEs and cross-border e-commerce trade effectively and accurately. So for instance, government agencies utilize different mechanisms with varying levels of sophistication sophistication for collection and storage. This has made aggregating data for devising policies and programs for women-led MSMEs on a wider, wider scale more challenging. Hence, policies concerning on data on women and e-commerce would benefit from enhanced coordination and information sharing across agencies and between public and private sectors. Second, while shortcomings in trade finance are evident due to inadequate access to government financial institutions and microfinance institutions among women-led MSMEs in the informal economy, it is worth noting that various form of forms of financial assistance and lending options are available. Still, most are not specific to the needs of women-led MSMEs. Thus, the private sector players such as e-commerce platforms and fintech companies play an increasing important role in bolstering government programs for women-led MSME through their own trade financing schemes and modalities. So under the digital literacy, as evidenced by the need to enhance the country's existing information and communications technology infrastructure, is a complex complex issue affecting not only the women-led MSMEs, but also other sectors of the economy. 
although limited in the scope, its strength lies in the robust portfolio of the programs for women and entrepreneurs, which currently exists in partnership with local, regional, and international stakeholders. As this is an issue area that figures high on the government's development agenda, the study finds vast opportunities for women-led MSME in terms of capacity building on digitalization and e-commerce. This can be realized through collaborative engagement between and among government agency, women business organization, and e-commerce platforms. Um, next would be the, the enactment of the Safe Spaces Act is a positive development in so far as discrimination and online sa safety and security for women MSMEs is concerned. However, many government agencies do not have enough data and dedicated formal mechanism to address cyberbullying and online sexual harassment in the context of online business transactions. So on networks, representation, and visibility, while it has been noted that women in general may like may lack a voice in governance and decision-making structures. The government's push for active participation of women business organizations in private sector consultation with APEC and ASEAN. So not, it is nonetheless commendable and should be sustained. In the foreseeable future, this may also include women MSMEs representatives' participation in the National Trade Facilitation Committee, where they can advocate for their needs as the government priority prioritize trade facilitation reforms, and negotiate provision in free trade agreements. Finally, under the logistics and custom duties, as a pain po point for businesses, including women, poses a threat to women-led MSME who may be disincentivized to compete inter internationally and limit their businesses to local markets instead. Opportunities through better coordination among government agencies to harmonize MSME support by promoting initiatives that encourage women and youth entrepreneurship can be explored. So next slide, please. So given the dynamic policy environment and passionate advocacy for women-led MSMEs and cross-border e-commerce, so the authors propose the following key policy options and consideration um, concerning women-led MSMEs. First is to improve coordination within and across government agencies, between government agencies and business organizations, and among government agencies and their stakeholders. So vibrant um, partnerships exist between and among government agencies, leading, leading e-commerce platforms, women in business-centered um, association or organization and fintech and other digital platforms. These partnerships may be more effective and institutionalized through a board, for example, like a technical board for APEC Matters, that convenes quarterly and serve as a platform for information dissemination, dialogue, and collaboration. So this board will be paramount in formulating strategies and action plans, resol resolving issues, respond and responding to persistent and novel threats. So creating a national rep repository containing capacity building and other programs and policies focusing on women-led MSMEs in cross-border e-commerce must be also considered. Next, enhance women-led MSMEs' access to programs, infrastructure, financing, and capacity building and other opportunities. So despite the continuous and comprehensive efforts by various stakeholders, access is a primary challenge faced by women-led MSME. More specifically, Women-led businesses have difficulties connecting to the internet, secure, securing loans and funding for their op operating costs and future expansion, um, processing information and procedures on cross-border trade, and participating in government-led programs. Hence, the underlying in, um, issues including their awareness and their, um, their nature of their business is informal. That's substantially contribute to the women-led MSME's low level of access to many services and programs must be addressed. So the third, um, as a result, um, in relation to the result of the met Metimeter, so um, we also um, advise to educate women-led MSMEs on the government's policies and programs affecting their businesses. So two main barriers to access are the lack of understanding of the government programs and policies and the rampancy of informality among women-led MSMEs. So the study by Bakasma et al. in 2022 revealed that many women-led MSMEs in e-commerce businesses in the Philippines were only um, established during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Um, correspondingly, this may explain the low awareness among women-led MSME of government programs supporting their internationalization through cross-border trade and their hesitancy to register formally. So since most are in nascent stages and hesitant to set up their businesses informally and pay taxes, women-led MSME have opted to stay informal. For its part, the Philippine um, Trade Training Center, or PTTC, offers several course, courses encompassing operations, procurement, marketing, and finance, to name a few. So it, it also has training programs for women-led MSMEs in various stages of businesses. For example, um, startup, growth, maturity, renewal, or decline. So the Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI, DTI also has several projects like Go Negotio to encourage help businesses to register. However, most programs and databases only contain registered MSMEs. Thus, concerned government agencies should intensify campaigns and project seeking to assist women-led MSMEs move from the informal to the formal sector. Next would be provide capacity building for e-commerce adoption, scaling up and cross-border opportunities, and adhering to the custom-related procedures. So education and skills are key factors in capacitating women, led MSME to sustain their businesses and participate in cross-border trade effect effectively. Notably, although the PTTC su supports businesses through its capacity building programs, that range from e-commerce adoption to export promotion, it has no particular activities for women-led enterprises. Thus, PTTC may consider develop me, developing a more gender-specific training programs to address the unique needs and demands for women. Next is um, help women-led MSMEs scale up and sustain their businesses. So women-led MSME were, were established in response to the movement restriction caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Hence, there is a need to acknowledge that financing, infrastructure, implementation on pro of programs, and other assistance are necessary for women-led MSMEs to sustain and scale up their future um, operations. Thus, mainstreaming access to these services and programs and enhancing coordination among stakeholders could help women-led MSMEs engage in cross-border trade. So lastly, if it's not included in this right, um, it's the general promote gender equity. So e everyone, regardless of gender, should have equal opportunity to participate in the cross-border e-commerce. In the Philippines, gender-specific issues have persisted despite policies and programs supporting MSMEs. So according to several respondents, most government programs are not gender-specific. Since men and women face unique challenges, a one size fit fits all program does not always yield to positive results. Therefore, a collection of sex disaggregated data must be strengthened to effectively develop targeted programs benefiting women led MSMEs engage in cross border e commerce. So, this is my last slide. So, in conclusion, regional and national policy landscapes have put utmost interest in promoting and fostering an enable, enabling environment for women led and MSMEs and digitalization. So the, the Philippines policy land, landscape exhibits strengths in two um, primary fields. The first one is in networks, representation, and visibility, as well as in digital literacy, e-payments, e-commerce, and trade regulation. Conversely, the current national framework reveals weaknesses in areas such as online discrimination, trade facilitation, and logistics and custom duties. So likewise, policy gaps must ad be addressed in several areas such as public private sector coordination, and women-led MSMEs' lack of access to finance and capacity building programs, low awareness of the government policies and programs due to informality, and challenges in scaling up and sustaining their participation in e-commerce. So thank you very much for your attention. So in case you have further questions related to our presentation, please feel free to type them on the Q&A, or you may check out our publications, public published on the PINS website. So the link is up there. So thank you so much again.